Well, hello everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, right? We're talking about this really cool retro 80s uh, outrun style text effect. In fact, not just text effect, the whole kit and caboodle we're going to create here in Photoshop. It's this retro, futuristic, pixel-based outrun style artwork. There's a hundred different names for it, but one common theme is that it's really cool stuff and it's really, really colorful. And I'm a sucker for rich, vibrant, crazy color. I just love it in most things that I'm looking at. So this stuff kind of naturally appeals to me. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I just want to let you know, make sure you go ahead and hit the little like button down there to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you feel so inclined. You can also follow me on uh, Instagram, at tutvid, and I mention that because if you create something using this tutorial today, I would love it if you would share it with me on Instagram. Tag me in that post. I don't need like some elaborate shout out. I just want to see it. I'm not looking for free promotion. Um, I'm just, you know, I'd love to see the stuff you guys are creating. I love interacting with you. And also, uh, if you wish to support this channel and the new studio space we're moving into, oh, I can't wait to show you guys. It's going to be sick. Uh, if you wish to support this channel, make sure you use that little link up in the corner. Buy a copy of my course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. It's better than Patreon, I think, at least, because, like, you get something. And just buy a new copy out of every month and keep showing your support. That kind of thing. Um, you, know, you don't have to if you don't want to. But, hey, if you do, I'm not going to tell you don't. Without further ado, and to get this long spiel over with, let's jump into the tutorial right now. All right, so here it is, the finished final effect. We're going to create every last bit of this uh, effect here, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do all of it. So I'm just going to jump out of full screen view mode here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to leave this open just in case we need a little reference as we work our way through this tutorial. But we're going to kick things off by going File, New. We're going to create a new document. You can really do any size you like, but if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing, I'm rolling with 2560 by 1440. Go ahead and hit create. Now, here's where things get kind of fun because I got something else to promote right off the bat. But don't worry. You don't have to pay anything for this. This is totally free. Down in the uh, down in the description for this video, there's a link for a free gradient pack. Let's check it out here real quick. Uh, well, you're not going to see much of anything, but it's this guy right here. Tutvid Outrun Stripes. It's a bunch of outrun style gradients. It's all of these gradients here. It's totally free. I just, I'm just going to ask you to sign up for my newsletter. If you've signed up for my newsletter already, punch your email address in. You're going to get the instant download. And it's our little trade-off. You get the free gradient pack. You punch your email address in. And you know what? Here's the dirty little secret. If you hate the emails I send you, unsubscribe from them. I don't care. You get to keep the gradients. And I'm totally cool with that as well. Uh, but you get your free outrun style gradient pack. So this is what it is. These are all gradients that I've put together. Uh, and uh, we're going to use a bunch of these gradients here in this tutorial. That's why I mentioned, hey, maybe go and download this gradient pack now. And you can follow right along with what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead, first things first, and come down here and hit this little icon here, the half white, half black circle, and choose to create a gradient fill layer, gradient fill layer. And we're going to select the gradient stripe here. We just click right on that. And I'm going to go with this gradient right here. This is the Outrun 01 gradient. All these gradients are just named Outrun 01 to Outrun 21. So we're going to go with Outrun 01 and I'm going to hit OK. And this is perfect orientation going from the orange at the bottom to the very dark purple at the top. Great. That's the linear style gradient at an angle of 90 degrees. Hit OK. I love it. You can name it whatever you want. But what I know I can do is select my white background and hit my delete or backspace key. Get rid of that layer. Well, you want to hit the delete key really. Get rid of that layer. And next, what we want to do is create a new layer, and I'm going to name this layer uh, Colored, if I can spell Colored correctly, we're going to name it Colored Texture. And the reason I'm naming it this is because I'm going to grab my brush tool here, and the brush tool located right there, and I'm going to select, I've loaded in all of these dust and particle brushes. Now, I'm going to have a link in the description. There's a great website with a lot of free brush packs called BrushEasy.com. I don't remember if that's exactly where I got these dust and particle brushes from. Um, and, and maybe I'll find a better brush particle pack that I'll include, but there'll be a link down in the description where you can download some free brush pack. I'm going to select, just select any dust particle brushes that you have. Uh, here, this one's 28, 2400 pixels. I'm going to size it down to like 1500 pixels and I'm going to hit this little icon right here. That's that little brush folder icon. I'm going to tick on shape dynamics and tick on scattering. Now I'm going to select scattering and increase the scatter amount all the way up. Oh, if I can click and drag it, let's try. There we go. I'm going to click and drag this all the way up to about a thousand percent, you know, just get it way up there. Then I'm going to go to shape dynamics here and I'm going to crank the size jitter way up as well. So I'm going to knock that up to 100. 
Uh, the angle jitter I'm also going to bring all the way up to 100 just so we're really randomizing our textures. I think I'm going to select brush tip shape here and I'm going to increase spacing as well as much as I can get it. A thousand percent, that's great. And I'm going to reduce the size again. I'm going to knock it down to a thousand pixels. So there we go. I'm going to close the brush tip shape uh, dialog box. And here's uh, the cool part of this. We're going to hold down our Alter Option key and start sampling colors. So we're going to go with like a purple up here. Uh, near the top, right? And we're just going to paint some of that purple texture in there. Then I'm going to come down and choose the pink. I'm going to paint some pink texture in here. And what this is going to do is it's just a way to really just lay in some pretty subtle texture uh, that's going to slightly overlap the colors around it. So you can see the purple's kind of bleeding into the pink. The pink's kind of bleeding into the purple and vice versa. We'll select this kind of hot pink here. And this is going to bleed into the pinks and the yellows. And that's all cool. And then we're going to choose some yellow down here. And this is going to bleed up into the orange and the, the purpley colors. Uh, so that's all good. We don't want to go too heavy with it, though. And the whole point of this is to still remain relatively subtle. So something like that will probably work and be pretty good. Maybe I'll add a little bit more of the darkish uh, purpley texture up near the top. But we've got plenty more texture we're going to level onto here and lay into place. So really be careful and don't go too crazy with your texturing. We're just looking to begin the texturing process. You can see there's before, there's after. We just get a nice, right? We're just getting some nice speckly, speckly action happening in there and it looks really nice. Now guys, I want to remind you once more, we're only a few minutes into this tutorial, but before we get too deep and too involved, again, if you wish to support this channel, uh, and I highly encourage you to, go ahead and buy my course. It's all about how to retouch photos in Photoshop. The link appeared right up there. Click. It'll bring you to the page. You can check out everything about the course, see all the videos that are included in it, see some examples, see some testimonials, all the good stuff. It's in that link right up there. If you pick up a copy, thank you so much. You help us keep doing what we're doing here uh, at tutvid.com. And uh, like I said, new studio coming soon, and that's going to be sick, but I also need to be able to pay for it. So that's all part of the reason we're going to start selling some stuff here. Let's get back to this tutorial. All right. So now with all that stuff out of the way, guess what? It's smooth sailing from here on out. Let's wrap up this effect. So what we're going to do is look to create a shape layer. I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm gonna make sure that I'm creating a shape layer right there, shape layer, great. Don't worry about the fill quite yet. Just click a single time and we're gonna create a shape that's 1350 by 1350. Go ahead and enter a return. You can see it's a quite large, uh, quite, quite a large shape there. And I'm gonna bring it to about the center of my document. And I think upon further review, we should really knock this down to probably about 1,000 by 1,000. Well, that's 100 by 100. Let's get our numbers right. There we go. Yeah, 1,000 by 1,000 looks a little bit more appropriate considering the size of our image. Uh, and I'm going to go select all. And just with my, with my move tool over here uh, selected, I can use my alignment options up here. And I just want to align it here uh, to the center of my document. Go ahead and command or control D to deselect that. And then here in the properties panel, we can adjust the color of the fill, this little purpley pink color here. And I am going to come out here and select this color swatch icon here, the multiple colors, and this brings up my color picker. And all I'm gonna do is sample the yellow orange color at the bottom of this gradient, which is at the very bottom of our sun. And go ahead and hit okay. And you can see, there we go. We fill in sort of our little sun with that exact color. Uh, in fact, I'll rename this layer sun. And I'm gonna add a layer mask to this layer by going layer, layer mask, reveal all. So just a white layer mask, nothing going away. We're going to go and grab the gradient tool here. And I want to create a simple uh, black to transparent gradient. So I'm just going to choose any simple gradient. We just want two colors. And I'm going to click on my first color stop. I'm going to make this black. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to select my second color stop here. I'm also going to make this black, right? I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm just going to select this top color stop here. It's really not a color stop. It's more like a transparency stop. And I'm going to set the opacity of this stop to 0%. What do we have? Well, we have a black to transparent gradient. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just drag the gradient up from the bottom. It's just going to really help fade our sun shape into this color down at the bottom of our document. And here's where things get really, really cool. We're going to go View. We're going to go New Guide Layout. Maybe you've never used this before. Maybe you have. But you're probably seeing something a little different than this. You might have, like, the default 12 column or 8 column setup appearing. We don't want this. Whatever you have, we don't want any columns. So first and foremost, click on columns to get rid of all the columns. We only want rows. And we don't want a gutter. A gutter is this, like, space between your guides. We don't want that. So let's just double click on gutter here and uh, hit zero. We definitely know we don't want a gutter. And the number of rows, we're going to increase it to 30 because we want just a lot of lines. A lot of lines is good for us. Go ahead and hit OK. Now that we have all these lines, well, let's come up here to View, and we want to make sure snapping is turned on, and in particular, snap to guides. So next, what we're going to do is grab our line tool. The line tool is located over here underneath the ellipse tool, right? You see it right there, line tool. 
grab that line tool and we're going to choose to create a shape here. Uh, you can set the fill to honestly whatever color you want. I'm just going to choose a color that contrasts everything we have going on here. So I'm going to go with like a light blue. Whoop, well, we don't want to we want to make sure we don't have our layer uh, our shape layer selected here. Let's just undo that. Uh, I'm going to just select my colored texture layer here. I'm going to go grab the line tool again and we'll just set this fill to like a light blue. And I want to set the weight. I don't care about the stroke. All I'm concerned with here is the weight of the line. I'm going to set that to 4 pixels, right? You see that up there? Weight 4 pixels. Great. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold down my spacebar and navigate near down to the bottom of my document. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to draw my first line starting at the bottom here. Hold down my shift key and just draw it across the sun. There we go. So we've got a blue shape. I can just drag this up above the sun now. Uh, and we can just begin drawing out a number of shapes. But I want to increase my weight by four pixels every time I do this. So let's go up to eight. Drag out another line. I just hold down my shift key. Boom. Looks good. And these lines don't have to be 100% precise. We're going to go 12 pixels for the next line. Hold down shift. I'm just looking to create some, some stripes that are getting larger and larger across, uh, across the base of our sun here. All right, I'm going to drag out another one. Hold down shift. Boom. Oh. And let's go up to 20 pixels. Great. Drag this bad boy out. Let's go up to 24 pixels. And I'll probably take it up to like 28 or maybe we'll go a little bit bigger. I don't know. We'll just see how it's looking. Let's go to 28. And maybe we'll go one click higher than 28. But you can see how they're kind of, the shapes are kind of naturally getting closer and closer to one another. Let's go to 32 just because we can. Yeah, let's go 32. That looks cool. All right, so we've got this crazy number of shapes here at the bottom of our, oh, just said okay there. I accidentally clicked something. I'm working with a new trackpad here. Um, I, we want to get rid of all these guides now. So we'll just go view, uh, show, and just hide the guides by unchecking guides. Just hide them. Get rid of them. Hold down your command or control key and your shift key. And you need to click on each of these layer thumbnails. So we're going to click on the first one, second one, third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And you can see See, it's loaded them all as a selection, all right? We can now go to our sun layer down here, click on the layer mask. You can see it has the little white outline around it, great. And we're just gonna fill this with black. So we're gonna go edit, fill, and choose from the drop down menu here, black. Go ahead and hit okay, and hit command or control D to deselect. Select the shape one layer, hold down your shift key, click on the shape eight layer, and then just delete all of those layers. And you can see what we've done is we've created this really cool effect down here at the bottom of the sun. Now, obviously, uh, if you don't like how close everything is getting up here near, you know, the thicker lines, you can always spread those out manually, um, but you might want to do that before you go and load that selection. So I can just deselect that and I can come up here to these top shapes, grab my move tool and start nudging them upward, just kind of away from one another a bit more. If I wanted to add a little bit more spacing, I thought, yeah, maybe that'll look a little bit better, something like that. But you just want to be careful so you don't lose that, that cool proportion and then just go ahead once more and select all these shapes. Boom, 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 boom. And then select that mask, and I'll just fill that with black using the hotkey command or control D to deselect. Select all those shapes, delete them, and you, you know, you just adjust the way the bottom sort of chunky gradation effect happens. And I'll just leave it at that. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it's good enough for what we're doing here. Next up, I think we want to actually apply a gradient to our sun now that I'm looking at it. Let's select the sun. We'll go to back to the properties panel. And this is very easy. You just choose that thumbnail, choose the gradient, and we have all those outrun gradients. And there it is, the, the outrun number two gradient. And let's just rotate. Uh, let's rotate the angle to about 125 degrees or so. That's going to put the lightest color down here uh, in this part of our sun. That looks pretty good. And you can always click and drag. Well, you don't want to click and drag the shape, actually. Just, eh, we'll leave it the way it is. I'm not going to mess around with it too much. I'm thinking about it in terms of a gradient overlay layer style. It doesn't quite work the same way. But uh, 125 on the angle is perfect. Linear gradient, beautiful. Uh, it all looks good. And we also want to go ahead and go layer, layer style, outer glow to apply an outer glow to the shape. And, and the outer glow is pretty much what I want. Um, I, I, I want. Maybe we'll change the blend mode to overlay here. We'll leave it, I think, at 100% opacity. The color needs to be adjusted. You can see it's, just, it's too dark. It's too rich. Uh, let's go with a color like uh, 85 uh, B6 double F. Yeah, just a lighter blue. Something like that looks a lot better. Go ahead and hit OK. That looks cool. I think I kind of like that. And I think we'll increase the size here from 25 to like 150, right? Really boost it up. Eh, maybe drop it from 150 to like 100. 100 looks better for the size of our document here. That's cool. There's our outer glow. So just overlay 100% opacity, a light blue, and a size of like 100 is great. Hit OK. Now check this out. We're going to create a new layer. And I'm going to name this Palm Trees. In fact, I'm going to duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, because we're going to, we'll end up merging them together, but I just want a separate layer. You'll see why in a second. Did you know 
Photoshop has a tree filter, filter, render, tree. Look at that. Take a close look at that. Tree. When I do this, what's going to happen is Photoshop's going to launch this uh, tree dialog where I can pick all kinds of different trees. Maybe I want a, a pine tree or an aspen tree or a maple tree, redwood tree, whatever, oak tree. In this case, I want a palm tree because that's just the style we're going for here. But you can see a bunch of different trees. And under palm tree, we can choose light direction, amount of leaves, the, the type of leaf. So I'm just going with the, the, the sixth leaf, uh, whatever that is. I'm ticking on randomize uh, shapes. I just like that. And then you can increase or decrease the leaves amount. Um, I think with an effect like this, because we're really ultimately going to reduce this to just a shape, less leaves is better. Too many leaves and the tree is almost going to become indistinguishable. Just a few leaves and you're going to be like, hey, that's definitely a palm tree, right? So every time you do this, you're going to get a little bit of a randomized uh, a randomized shape here. So you can just go up and down until you get a palm tree you like that. That'll probably work for us. You can change light direction if you want. In this case, it's not going to matter. It's not going to mean anything because we're just going for the shape of the palm tree. Hit OK. It's going to place a palm tree. Pretty cool. Go ahead and hit Command or Control T, and we're going to tilt this palm tree this way just a little bit. I'm going to move it over. I'm actually going to scale this upward just a little bit, kind of like that. Cool. Go ahead and commit that change. We're going to leave that palm tree there. We're going to turn on our second palm trees layer. We're going to do the same thing. Filter, render, tree. We're going to add a palm tree as well. Uh, in this case, I'll, I'll increase the leaves amount just to get make sure I have a, definitely a, a different tree here. Let's go randomize that one more time. There we go. Something like that's cool. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to place that tree. Command or Control T. See, it's up on its own layer now, so it's easy to just transform. Hold down my Shift key, scale it down. Let's tilt this one outward a little bit and put this one like over here. All right. Once we've done that, we can merge both these layers together. We can just merge down by hitting Command or Control E. Palm trees are on the same layer. Beautiful. But we need them to blend in with our outrun effect. How do we do that? Well, we add another gradient fill layer above this. And I'm going to use the outrun hyphen O3 gradient. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK once more because what we need to do is clip this layer to the palm tree layer using the hotkey Command Option or Control Alt G. You can see, look at that. Our palm trees are now just beautiful purple shapes. We can double click on that gradient fill layer. And what we can do here is we can drag the gradient around if we want to adjust the way the palm trees look a little bit. We can change the angle of the gradient a touch if we need to, or even the scale of the gradient if we want to make the transition between, you know, very dark purple and light purple a little bit uh, more harsh. So we can go ahead and just, we can play around with this a little bit. I'll just drag it around, adjust it a little bit. Just kind of do it until you like the way it looks. And now I think it's time to add a little bit more texture. Normally, I wouldn't really add the texture to the end, but the texture is such a big part of this effect that I really want you guys to see it as we're working through this tutorial. Because the video is a little bit of a longer video, I don't want you to have to wait till the end for the big payoff. I want you to really see some sweet progress as we move through this, and we can always adjust and mask our textures as we go. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and create a new layer here, and I'm going to name this Grain. Uh, hyphen big. So we're going to go big grain here. We're going to go edit fill and we're going to fill this with 50% gray from our contents drop down menu. Hit OK. And I'm going to go filter, camera raw filter. We're going to jump over here to the effects tab and I'm going to get tons of grain. I want as much grain as I can get. Um, I'll probably increase the size a bit. Uh, but I don't want to go all the way up, you know, huge with the size. And then I'm going to increase the roughness and make that as just as rough as possible. Then I'm going to simply hit OK and I'm going to set this layer to the blend mode soft light. And you can see what that's done. We've immediately added a huge amount of te uh, texture to this and we can just, you know, reduce the opacity as we see fit. Cuz after all, we're going to be layering on the texture here, so we don't need one layer to do it all. Uh, so knocking it down to something like 40 is great. And then we're going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate that layer, and we're going to add just a little bit of a motion blur to this filter, blur, motion blur. And I'm going to go with an angle of 90, and I think I'm going to set the distance to like, I don't know, 65, just something that's pretty subtle. I want it to look like there's just some like streaky up and down texture back there. Maybe even 65 is too much. Let's go like 45. Yeah, I think 45 is nice. Go ahead and hit OK, and I'll probably reduce the opacity of that layer even more. Got it down to 23%, and the original grain layer is down at 38%. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, look at that. Look at that before. And after, just adding two layers of grain is already doing so much to make this look much more retro, number one, and just blend all these colors together. And you know what, since we're having so much fun with the grain, let's add just two more of the textures and we'll mask everything as we go. Uh, I am going to drag in this Dust and Scratches texture, uh, and there will be a link for this texture pack down in the description of this video. Uh, my man Chris Spooner over at Spoon Graphics, I believe it is. 
uh, has a great download, uh, and it is these amazing textures. I think there's five of them in this pack. I'm just going to scale this up to about that size. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and check icon to commit that change. And what I want to do is just invert these colors. So I'm just going to right click on this layer and choose rasterize layer and then just hit Command or Control I, just invert them. All the black becomes white, white becomes black. And then go up here and we'll choose the blend mode multiply. And this is gonna knock out all that white and just leave all that speckly black stuff. And what I'll do is I'll reduce the opacity of this just a little bit. Just maybe take it down to like 75. Something like that looks great. And I think before we do anything else, we'll just add our halftone texture on top of this as well. So we create a new layer there. We'll name it halftone. And I want to make sure my foreground color is set to black here because we're going to uh, we're going to be adding some black bars to this layer. But we need to fill the layer with white. So we're going to go edit fill. And from the contents, we're going to choose white. Hit OK. Great. And I'm going to go filter, filter gallery. And my foreground color here is set to black. So you can see halftone lines here are all black. And what I did was under sketch here, I chose the halftone pattern uh, filter. And I changed it from the circle halftone pattern, which looks kind of crazy like this, uh, or the dot halftone pattern. The dot is really the one you're probably most familiar with, to the lines, which are kind of like those old school TV lines. I just set the size at two and a heavy contrast. So it was sort of just like a bunch of black and white lines next to each other. Hit OK. And of course, to knock away the white, we set this to the layer blend mode of multiply. Multiply gets rid of the white. And we're just left with all these black lines. And I really want to knock the opacity way down here. Let's take it down to like 25. And you can see we just have some nice sort of like TV lines in there as well. And if you really want to take it a step further, you can even go like filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur this like one, maybe one, maybe even less than one, 0 0.6 pixels, just to like give the edges of those lines even more fuzziness. Next, what we want to do, now that we've added all of this texture, grab our text tool. And we want to choose the font. I want to choose the font Fat Frank. Now, if you are a CC member and you have Typekit, this is a Typekit font. See Typekit right there. So you can come up here, add fonts from Typekit, and you can find Fat Frank, and you can use it right along with me. We're going to set this font at probably like 350 points. Uh, that should be big enough. And I'm going to type out the word MOTOR in all caps. And I'm going to commit that change. There we go. Looks good. And I'm just going to drag this guy to the center of my document. So maybe I can even just go select all. And with my move tool here, I can just align to the uh, horizontal and vertical centers, command or control D to deselect. And now I really want to break all these letters out onto their own layers. I'm pretty sure somewhere out there, there's a Photoshop script that will do this at the click of a button. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time looking around for it or even playing around with anything. Here's how I would normally do this kind of more manually. You can number one, command or control J to duplicate your layer and just save a copy of your editable text. So for instance, you don't forget that it's the fat Frank font that you used for this project. Uh, if you're not concerned about that, don't worry. You can you don't need to do that duplicated uh, type layer. Simply right click and choose to convert this layer to a shape. All right. So it's going to take the layer from live text, make it just vector shapes. Now all we need to do here is well, it's not all we need to do. It's a, it's slightly involved. We're going to create uh, five because we have five letters, five solid color fill layers, and I'm just going to go with like a very light blue, so it's very noticeable. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control J one, two, three, four times. So we have five different layers here. Now check this out. I'm going to shut all of these top layers off. Right. I'm just going to have. In fact, I'll even shut that layer off. I'm going to select the motor layer here, and we need to choose the black arrow tool down here, the path selection tool, and just select letters one at a time. So I'm just going to select this first letter edit cut and go up to the first color fill layer select it and simply paste it so just edit paste and it's going to treat that vector letter as a mask and we just have that color fill layer it's totally vector still uh, and we can double click on that and we can change its color we can add layer styles to it anything we want so that's nice and easy so i go back to the motor layer select the o edit cut Get rid of the O on that original text layer, turn on the next color fill layer, command or control V, paste it in place, and we've got M and O on their own layers. And of course, you can just do the same thing here with T, that's command X or control X to cut it. Select that layer, command or control V, uh, go back, let's grab the O, command or control X, turn that, uh, let's turn that layer on, command or control V, paste it there, great. Back to the original shape layer. Command or Control X, and you can see the whole shape layer goes away because we've removed all the letters. Select the topmost color, Command or Control V to paste in place. All right, now we have M O T O R, each letter on its own layer. The reason I'm doing this is because we want to add a relatively complex stroke to each of these letters, and each letter needs to sort of have its own stroke or at least be able to control its own stroke independently. So we're going to begin here by adding a gradient overlay uh, by going layer, 
layer style and just choosing gradient overlay. And once again, we're going to uh, reference our gradient pack. And I'm going to go with this gradient here, the outrun hyphen 04 gradient. Hit OK. And I don't want an angle of negative 75. In fact, I'll probably just go like 90, right? So I got that dark blue at the top. Um, I'm going to I'm going to leave the scale. Eh, no, let's put we'll the scale back up to like 100 or around 100. Yeah, that actually looks almost perfect. We want very dark blue at the top. I can click and drag here to just drag down and reveal more of that dark blue. That's great. Linear gradient, normal blend mode, opacity of 100, all great, 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 great stuff. That's what you want your gradient to look like, right? Just that dark blue fading to light blue fading to white all the way, just like that for your text. Looks good. We're going to also apply a stroke to this text, and you can see it's giving me the exact stroke I want, but here's the important stuff here. Follow with me. It's a size of seven pixels for this particular size text. If your document's larger or smaller, you might want to adjust the size a little bit. Position is inside, so it's, it's going to be sort of sitting inside the shape of the text. If we go outside, you'll see it's going to bump the stroke out a little bit. Just don't like the way it looks. So we're going to stick with inside. A blend mode of screen here. And the opacity of 100% is great. And we want to change the fill type. Normally, it's color, just a solid color stroke. We don't want that. We want a gradient. And the gradient you want to use is this Outrun 21 gradient. So Outrun 21. Now, the important step here is that you change the style here from the normal default of linear, which looks like that, to reflected. And what reflected is going to do for us is it's going to put sort of dark swaths on the outer parts of our letters and fade to brightness in the middle. This is why we need all of our letters up on their own layer, or each of them to be broken out onto their own layers, so we can have this beautiful custom gradient on all of our letters. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the OK button here. And as I look at this, I think maybe we could stand to use a little bit of an inner shadow up at the top and just further accentuate that gradient. So I'll just double click here on the FX tab in my layers panel to open up my layer styles again. Let's just go with a simple inner shadow. And I think, yeah, blending mode of, of normal is fine. Black is fine. Opacity 100, great. Distance of 10, size of 10. Yeah, it looks all good. Maybe we can increase the, the size to like 15. Maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. Take it down to like 65. And that looks pretty good. We can just tick it off. There's before. There's after. I dig it. I'm going to hit OK and commit that change. Now, we need to apply this to all the other letters. This is actually super easy. Right click on that layer. Copy layer style. Select the O layer. Hold down Shift. Select the R layer. Right click and choose Paste, Layer Style, and Wablam. Just like that, all of our letters have our initial gradient and stroke effects applied to them. The next thing we want to do is grab our pen tool, make sure that we're drawing shape layers, and the fill color can be anything you like. I'm actually going to zoom in for this. And we want to begin creating little, just kind of like scalloped shapes for each bit of uh, each letter. So I'm going to create the first piece of shape there. I'm going to create another one here. Right, And the key with these shapes is you just kind of want them all to be about the same height. So you don't want any of them to be radically taller or, or, or shorter than any of the other shapes. So I'm gonna try to make a concerted effort here to make these about the same height. Hold down my Alter Option key here and just drag this one back around. Hold down the Alter Option key when you're joining it to keep all the lines straight. And don't worry, we're gonna join all these shapes together in just a moment. I just wanna go through and create uh, some interesting wavy shapes. I'll create another part. Create another part over here, just right through the O. Let's go. Let's just make it curve down like that. It looks pretty cool. Hold down the Alter Option key. Oh, undo that. Let me just hold down the Alter Option key. I don't want to delete the anchor point. I accidentally right clicked. There we go. I'm just going to drag this shape right around. I keep right clicking because I'm still getting used to this new trackpad. There we go. Hold down the Alter Option key. Join that together. Great. That looks good. Uh, I'm just going to create a simple scallop shape here. And I'll just go through and create all these shapes really, really quickly here. I'll speed this video up um, and we'll be done with this in no time flat. Great. So we can zoom out and we've got our shape running right across this as uh, as we wish. You can see it's a number of shape layers here. We can select the top one. Well, we don't want to double click the top one. Select the top one. Hold down shift. Select the bottom one and use the hotkey command or control E and it's going to merge all of those shape layers together into one nice shape. I can double click on that shape and we'll call this a text inset because it's going to be the colorful stuff that sits on top of the text. And once more, we'll go up here to Layer, Layer Style, Gradient Overlay. And the gradient we want to choose here is the Outrun-05 gradient. Hit OK. And you can see how it's applied. Uh, I can drag this out of the way. If it's not quite applied to your liking, well, number one, we can increase the scale to soften it up a little bit. And then just drag it downward a little. 
and make sure that it's applied exactly how we want it to be applied and where we want it to be applied. It looks a little funky right now, but that's mainly because uh, these shapes are not clipped to the text and they're not just kind of wedged into place. Let's hit OK here. And in order to clip this to all of these layers, what we want to do is first group these layers, the M-O-T-O-R layers. So I'm going to select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one, hit Command or Control G to group them. And I'm just going to name this motor, kind of something obnoxious like that. And I'm going to select that text inset layer and use the hotkey Command Option G, Control Alt G on the PC. And we simply clip that artwork to the entire layer group. And then we get this effect. And of course... You know, you can always go in because uh, these are uh, ma uh, maps, these are paths, and you can change them however you like. So I can select these couple here on the side, and I can maybe nudge them upward a little bit to get a little bit more darkness out of them. Something like that looks cool. Uh, you know, same thing with the R. If the R needs to go up a little bit, we can always nudge it up a little just to make sure we're seeing all the dark purpley uh, bits up there. That's all cool. Uh, and you can always, of course, if we need a Command or Control T and just stretch these down to make sure we're getting proper coverage, you can do that as well. See how I'm, I'm just up a little bit off the bottom of those letters there. See how the bottom path doesn't quite cover. Command or Control T and just stretch those bad boys out a little bit, nudge them back upward and get some of that dark purple love happening up there. It looks so good. I want to select this shape here. I got to nudge it over a little bit, me downward just a touch. Make sure that everything is covered and everything looks good. That looks pretty good. Looks like everything's covered neatly, except something's going on here. Let me zoom in and look at this. Okay, so what it looks like happened is this uh, this little shape over here just needs to be nudged out a little bit, just to make sure we're not intruding on uh, the middle part of the M at all. I can stretch this over just a touch. So it's just some like little manual tweaking and work that needs to happen in there. Oops, zoom out a little bit. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is select this inset layer and the layer beneath it by holding on the shift key. And we want to merge these to a new layer. We still want to preserve these layers, but we want to simply merge these up to a new layer. The hotkey is command option E, that's control alt E on the PC. It just, whoop, I also loaded a selection. I just want those two layers. You can see they're merged up to a layer there, that's great. I'm gonna use the hue saturation command to convert, convert them to white. Command or control U to bring up hue saturation. And all you really have to do here is just increase lightness all the way up to 100%. See that it knocks everything out of that layer. We just have an exact copy of the text beneath it, but just solid white. Now what we're gonna do is just duplicate this layer and we're gonna shut it off because we're gonna use that later, but I wanna mess around with this first one first. And before doing this step, we wanna make sure that this text is aligned with the very center of our document. Even if we're not going to use this in the exact center of our document, the way this next filter works, it works based upon the center of your Photoshop document. So just go select all and grab your move tool and just make sure that this piece of text is aligned to the exact center. And you can see it is command or control D to deselect. And we're gonna go filter, blur, radial blur. Here in radial blur, we're gonna choose to zoom this blur and we're gonna set the amount to 50. We want a hefty radial blur. In fact, I'll probably crank the quality up the best as well. Hit okay and you'll see what's gonna happen here. And the idea with this is to create like a 3D effect behind this text of the, uh, the of the text sort of dropping away. So we want to duplicate this particular blurred layer until it almost looks like solid text. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J once, twice, three, four, five, maybe six different times, something like that. And then I'm going to hold down Shift, select the bottom layer, Command or Control E to merge them together. And I'm going to drag this layer beneath the motor, uh, the motor layer group there. And I now need to just scale this down. So I'm gonna go edit, free transform, and I'm gonna scale it directly to the middle, holding on shift and alt, that shift and option on the, the Mac, and just scale this down until it looks like it's pretty much coming out of the letters, just like that. Go ahead and hit the check icon. Look at that, it looks pretty cool, right? And then hit command or control U to bring up hue saturation once more, and we're gonna colorize this. So I'll tick on colorize here. I'm just gonna drop the brightness. I'm gonna increase the saturation quite a bit. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna try to go with like a dark, dark blue. So let's drop the brightness, drop that brightness, really, really drop the brightness quite a bit. Something like that will probably work. We may even drop the, uh, the overall saturation a little bit. Go ahead and hit okay. And I think what I'll do here is just drop the opacity of the, this, uh, this kind of zoomed. In fact, I'll call this extrusion drop the opacity of the extrusion down to like 80%, just so it's a little see-through, but not too see-through. Next up, we'll turn on the layer that we just shut off up there, right? Just turn that on, and we're going to call this uh, Motion Blur. And I'm going to go Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And we're going to blur it straight up and down. 90, uh, 90 degree angle is great. And a distance of, let's go, I don't know, let's try with like 150. That's probably pretty good, 150. Maybe we'll go to 200. Something like that. Yeah, that's cool. And we're going to duplicate this a few times. Command or Control J, J, 
J, so I'll duplicate it three times. I'm going to merge all these layers together. Commander control E, Commander control E, Commander control E. And I'm going to drag this also behind, I think I'm going to drag it behind everything. Maybe I'll put it in front of the extrusion. Eh, I think I'm, I'm going to drag it behind the extrusion. I think, yeah, I like it a little bit more being able to see some of that extrusion. And I think I'm going to crunch the overall effect down a little bit by going edit, uh, free transform, hold down my alter option key and just crunch this down a little bit. Right, so the text is going to have just like a little bit of a blur coming off of it. In fact, I think it needs a little more motion blur. So we're going to go blur, motion blur. And I think I'm going to go with like, oh, you know what? 200 actually looks pretty good there. I'm going to go with 200 there and then I'll crunch this down. Command or control T, hold down your alt or option key. Crunch the, that little blurriness inward. And there we go, something just like that. We get some cool blurriness coming off this text as well. So let's choose our top layer here, and now we're going to go back and grab our text tool once more, and I'm going to type out the word uh, OUTRUN with a capital O, so OUTRUN, just like that, and we want to change the font, so I'm going to open up my character panel, this by the way is window, uh, character, if you're not aware, and I want to use the font Black Sword, I'm pretty sure this font is free, just run a Google search for it, it's one word, Black Sword, you see that right there, Black Sword. It's a great little font, great script font, and we're going to use it here. I'm going to set the size here to like 225 maybe. Yeah, 225 looks pretty good. The color does not matter. We're just going to stick with black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the glyph panel, and the glyph panel for this particular font is what I'm interested in. So window glyphs, I can open up the glyphs panel. You see i got all these different like glyphs in here. I'm going to make this window just a little bit smaller, and I'm going to add one more type field here, and I'm going to choose to add one of these like swooshy things. So I'm going to add like this little swoosh here. Just double click on it. It's going to add that swoosh. Great. I can close the glyph panel. I can just commit that change up here, and I can drag this little piece of type into place. In fact, I can make it a bit larger if I want. Want. So let's maybe make this swoosh like 350 points. There we go, something like that. We get a nice huge swoosh beneath our outrun word. And now what I'm going to do is just group these two layers together. So I'm going to select the top layer, hold on shift, select the bottom layer, hit command or control G to group them together. And I'm going to name this layer uh, outrun uh, base text, something like that. And I'm going to duplicate the group, command or control J. I'm just going to shut the top layer off and I'm going to open up this bottom uh, layer group, select the top uh, text layer, right click, convert it to a shape, select the bottom outrun layer, right click, convert it to a shape. And we're just going to merge these two layers together. Select the top one, command or, con well, we got to select both layers. I'm sorry, command or control E, merge them together. And you can see it's still, based upon that icon, it's still a shape layer. Great. Select this outrun base test test. Uh, text, excuse me, <laughs> layer group, right click, and we're going to ungroup these layers because it's really just one little layer in there. And we can just name this outrun because this is our actual outrun text. What we're going to do with this text now is go edit, transform, and I'm going to choose to uh, skew this. So with skewing turned on, I'm going to select this middle right hand handle and I'm going to push the text up kind of like that, right? That looks pretty cool. And it really doesn't need to be moved very much. I can move it just a little bit, but it really doesn't need to be moved a lot. We're gonna add, well, let's duplicate the layer first, Command or Control J, and I'm gonna shut off the lower one. We're gonna get back to the lower one in a second. We're going to add a gradient to this layer, layer style, gradient overlay. Feels like we've done this a hundred times already, right? And we're gonna select the gradient stripe, and now we're gonna go with Outrun hyphen 06. Go ahead and hit OK. And I wanna keep this pretty normal, just normal blend mode, opacity of 100%. The only thing I'm really interested in changing is the angle. I'm gonna set this to like negative 70. And I'm going to set the scale to 100%. Keep that at default. So you can see it's like a light blue to a pink type gradient that's happening here. I do want to give this an outer glow as well. So let's go outer glow. And in this case, I'm going to go outer glow blend mode screen. Uh, opacity of 100% is beautiful. Uh, the color... Eh, I don't like the light blue. I want to go darker. I think I'll go with that color we had earlier on, which I think was like 9000 FF. I think that was the color. Uh, looks about right. Uh, so there we go. That's cool. The size needs to be knocked down a little bit. Let's take it down to like 25 pixels. Uh, that looks cool. Let's hit OK. I'm going to choose the layer on the bottom here. Let's just call this Outrun uh, Shadow. And I'm going to nudge this layer down. So I'm going to go shift down arrow key one and shift right arrow key one, something like that. And I think I'm going to change the color. I'm going to fill it with the color uh, five, four, two, two, seven, zero. So another dark purple color. Hit OK. Looks pretty cool. Now that I see it, I'm going to nudge it back upward a little bit. Just nudge it until it looks like it's it's right at home and fitting right in. So now the last two steps are really to take all of this text and stick it beneath all of that texture we created. So let's grab all of our texture layers, the half tone, hold down shift, dust and scratches, grain big and grain big, and let's move all of this up to the top above our text. 
Well, now the text is starting to look a little washed out. So what do we want to do? Well, I want to command or control click on the outrun text, and I'm going to hold down. Uh, I'm going to well, I'm going to open up my motor letters layer. I'm going to hold down command and shift, and I'm going to select each of these letters, just like that. And I'm going to use this selection. Number one, the the half tone lines have got to go. So I'm going to select the half tone layer. I'm going to go layer layer mask. And I'm going to choose to hide the selection. So whatever selected, make sure my mask hides that stuff. Great. Now the dust and scratches texture is way too much. We need to get rid of that as well. So all we need to do now is hold down the alter option key and drag that mask down, drop it on the dust and scratches layer, and it's going to get rid of it just like that. Now I like the, the grain layers actually. They just add a good natural amount of grain to our overall effect. And... I kind of like the way it looks. It's really just going to be a matter of nailing the colors, getting your shapes right, uh, and then positioning. Maybe really in, a, in a, an ideal world, the, the text would all be down a little bit further, reveal a little bit more of the top of the palm trees. Uh, but, you know, all things considered, I, I kind of dig it. I like the way it came out. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to hit the tab key here and F, uh, the letter F twice to bring it up to full screen view mode. Blow it up on my screen. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this one. If you've enjoyed it, guys, please go ahead and hit the little like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you create some kind of outrun artwork using these techniques, I would love to see it. I love seeing the stuff you guys create. I've been getting so much stuff shared with me on Instagram lately. It's so super cool. I try to jump in and interact and like and comment on everything that I can. Uh, make sure you post this and tag me in your Instagram post at tutvid. I have a little like graphic bug that'll appear with my Instagram uh, handle. Uh, and of course, course for creating outrun artwork in photoshop retro futuristic whatever you want to call it i don't care it's sick that's it get it got it good daniel dodson tuckvid.com i'll catch you in the next one